Amen. Bless the Lord. O oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. You know, let me just welcome each and every one of us streaming tonight to Bible study. And you're near, you're far, you're in Jamaica, you're overseas. You know, we want to greet you tonight. And we want to welcome you to Bible study in the name of our Lord Jesus. Before we get into the word tonight, I would like to ask us to bow our heads as I breathe a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, you are great, Lord, and you are greatly to be praised from the rising of the sun unto the going down, the very same. Lord, your name alone is worthy. You sit on high and you look on low. You are God Almighty. We come before you this night, Lord Jesus Christ, as we look to present your words, get in your words again. We pray, mighty God, that you will edify us. We pray, God, that you'll cover us, that you'll touch us, Lord Jesus, with your words. Let as your words be spoken tonight, God, that they go forth with anointing, that they go forth with power, that they go forth with clarity, and that, Lord Jesus, your people, great God, will hear your words, God, and apply it to their lives. We pray tonight, Lord Jesus, that you will take full control of this Bible study. I present my mind to you. I present my thoughts to you. I pray, great God, that you fill my thoughts, that you fill my mind, and that your will be accomplished. We give you thanks tonight for hearing and thanks for answering. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord one more time, everybody. You know, um, it's always good to get into the word of the Lord. It's always good to talk about, you know, things pertaining to the kingdom. You know, and I thank you for, you know, just tuning in tonight. And we pray that, you know, that the, the, the word of God will do something for you, that you would have received a blessing, you know, after the study is true. We looked last week. And the scripture is taken from Genesis chapter 15, 1 to 6, and Genesis chapter 16, 1 through to 6. And I'll be reading it again for us tonight as our focus, you know, is from these two passages. Amen. So Genesis chapter 15, 1 to 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliza of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine here. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine here, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be in thine here. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven, and tell the stars if thou art able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted to him for righteousness. Amen. Now Genesis 16, 1 through to 6. So we, Genesis 15, 1 to 6 tells us that, you know, the Lord has no promised Abraham a seed and that this seed should come out of his loins. And then in Genesis 16, 1 through to 6, Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no children, and she had an handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abraham, Behold, now, the Lord that restrained me from bearing, I pray thee, go in unto my maid, and it may be that I obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarah, Abraham's wife, 
took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid unto thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thine hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. Amen. So, last week we started and we focused on the thought and the topic abide finding and abiding in the will of God. You know, I am convicted in my spirit as an individual and, you know, it's my desire to live all my life to please the Lord. Not that I do it all the time, but it is my desire to live my life pleasing to the Lord. But I'm convicted and, I, and I'm burdened that, you know, whatever I do, I should try to make sure that I am in the will of God. No, we don't talk about, um, we don't look at it, the will of God in sections, you know, as I go through this here, but I'm really trying to focus on, on, on the Abraham story, right? But there is what we call God's divine will, and, and, and this is God's will for all mankind, and, 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 and for example, the Bible says it is not his will for any to perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that is God's divine will, broad will for all mankind. It is not his will for any to perish, but that all should come to repentance. So it is God's desire and it is God liking and God wanting for all men to be saved. But all men will not be saved because then all men have a decision to make whether they want to serve God or not. So God's um, divine will is that all men, you know, should be saved. Then, then it, there's what we call God's will for your life. Um, God's perfect will for your life. Right? Some folks would subscribe uh, and they, some folks don't believe that, you know, you have a permissive will. There is only divine will. Um, you know, I could share my thought on that, you know, I believe that there is permissive will. I believe that, you know, though God would want our life to go a particular way, there are times when we make our decisions. And when we make our decisions, you know, we, we sometimes go out of the will of God. But that does not disrupt the plan of God, you know, because his plan for our life, you know, remain consistent. But sometimes we go outside of God's will. And then the things that happen to us, which is where I'm burdened with tonight, the, the things that happen to us when we go outside of God's will, you, you, you find that, you know, life is not as we could have it. Because, you know, we heard we disobey, you know, God's known will and, and, and step outside of it. And then you find that the things that we go through sometimes, you know, are caused by our own action. So I'm feeling a burden tonight that as children of the living God, you know, we need to take a stock and take a check, you know, of how we live our lives. You know, if we try to find the mind of God, you know, as it pertains to how we live, as it pertains to how we do things, or is it that we just do as we think, we just do our own will, and then, you know, find out that, you know, this is not the will of God. I would encourage us tonight as believers that we spend the time, any move 
that we are going to make, that we spend the time to find the mind of God and allow God to lead us and direct us along the path that he has for us. We quote the scripture last week and we are going to quote it again this week. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts to prosper you, thoughts to give you an expected end. And if, if the God of heaven can have thoughts for our life, if he can have a plan laid out for our life, this plan that he has laid out for our life, his is perfect will. And God wants us as individuals to abide in this perfect will for our life. So like I said, there are some folks that believe that they can live their life, exercise their own will because it is, remember I said last week, that is by our decision we express our will. And they believe that they can live their life and do what they want to do and say that they are still in the will of Almighty God. And they said this because, you know, God is omniscient and God knows all things. And, and God has already put it in his provision to compensate for our mistake. You know, while I believe that God is omniscient and God knows all things, and while I believe that God is able to, to take that which was meant for evil and turn it for good, and while I believe that God can change any situation, it is my personal belief that there is a perfect will of God for our life, and God has designed it that way. And then there is what we consider our will, where we exercise our will and do what we want. And anytime we do that, anytime we live our life this way, you are going to find that we end up in situations, and then we are going to wonder how is it that we end up in this situation? Why is it like this? Not recognizing that we stepped out of the will of God, the plan of God for our lives. We stepped out of it and we find ourselves in situation where we have to know, go back to the same God and say, Lord, how can I fix this? How can I correct this? What is it that I can do? But the good thing is, his grace did much more abound. The book of Romans tells us in Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, I urge you, brethren, can we look at Romans? He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that he present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, hallelujah, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind, that he may prove, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So like I said, I believe that there is this perfect will of God. God expects us to find it. He expects us to walk in it so that we can please him as individuals. In order to do this, I said last week that there is a fear that we should operate with. There is a fear that we should walk with. And this fear is that holy respect. Respect to make sure that whatever we do, whatever decisions we make, are aligned to the will and purpose of God for our lives. Like I said, that there is just this burden Hallelujah, and I, and, I, and I want the saints of God to know tonight that it is incumbent on us that we should walk in God's perfect will for our life. So though there is a part that is made known to some of us, and what do I mean by this? Sometimes God will tell some of us, and say, look here, this is 
what I have you to do. He might not have revealed everything to you, but he said, this is what I have to, for you to do. This is what I want you to do. This is how I want you to approach it. Uh, sometimes we do not carry out the will of God as he would have it. Uh, we are not determined so much in our spirit to walk the path that he wants us to, to walk. And sometimes it might be difficult to do what God wants us to do, what God requires of us. It might be difficult. But nonetheless, we are to purpose ourselves to walk the path. If we are going to please the Lord with our every move, and if we are going to identify and abide in the will of God for our lives, this holy respect is what we must use as a code, a code of how we operate, a code of conduct, so that we might have this respect. This respect will help us to walk as God would have us to walk. We mentioned the scripture last week from Proverbs 9, 9 through to 11. To, to 11. It says, instruct a wise man and he will be wise still teach a righteous man and he will increase in his learning the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding for through wisdom your days will be multiplied and your years will be added to your life this fear as I mentioned last week um, really means to have a moral reverence. It means a holy respect. This fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This fear of the Lord will produce wisdom. This wisdom like a fuel that, you know, will keep an engine going. This wisdom which come out of fear in the Lord will generate, will cause wise choices and good habits in us. As individuals we also defined last week the will of God as to include everything that God desires or wishes to happen in earth or in heaven as a result we said he has planned what he wishes to occur for example in the first part of the Lord's Prayer in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus teaches us to pray that the Father's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this is just a bit of recap. Matthew 6, 9 to 10, he says, Pray then in this way, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The word will that is used in this passage comes from the word telma, which means what one wishes or what one has determined will happen. Therefore, we are to want God to have his wish. We are to want God to have his will and his plan fulfilled in our life. It therefore means that children of the Lord, as we should as children of the Lord, we should try to make our life and the plans we have agree with his plans. So whatever plans that we are making, whatever things that we desire to do, one of the things that we should do is to make sure that we find the will of God and make sure that his plan, his will for our lives, our plan and our will is aligned with his. We Look at the story of Abraham, and you know that the team revolves around land, and it re revolves around um, descendants. In Genesis 12, 1 to 4, the Lord did appear to Abraham, and he said, Get thee out of your country, and out of your kindred, and out of your father's house, unto a place that I would show thee. Abraham left that place by faith and he went to a place that the Lord now said that he would show him. In Genesis chapter 15, 2 to 6, when God appeared unto Abraham in a dream, what God did was that he 
reiterated this, this promise to Abraham, this plan that he had for Abraham's life. He reiterated to him. And he said that I will give you an heir. I will give you a child. I will multiply you. I will make your name great. God reiterated his plan for the life of Abraham. So we, so the will of Abraham, of God for Abraham as it pertains to being the father of nations uh, 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 and a seed of the promise should come from the line of Abraham and from the womb of his wife, Sarah. So the will of God for their life was that a heir should come from both of them. However, we read in Genesis chapter 6, 2 to 6. And Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I might obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened unto the voice of Sarai. So Abraham and his wife, I put it to us based on these passages, that Abraham and his wife went outside of God's will. And he brought forth a son of a bondwoman. Some would argue, we said it last week, that Abraham did not know completely God's will. And because of this, you know, he, he took, he hearkened unto the voice of his wife and took his wife's servant for a second wife. We mentioned last week that one of the things that we can learn from the passage, so we're trying to keep it to the passage, one of the things that we can learn is one, that we should always seek to know God's will for our life. Very important. Mark your while the will of God sometimes will not be hidden. In that, we can, as we go through the world, we can know the will of God. His will, like I said earlier on, is for none to perish. But as it comes to the will of God for our lives as individual, we are going to have to spend some time and talk to God and say, God, what is your will for my life? I don't know how many of us have ever fasted and said, Lord, what is your will for my life as it pertains to ministry? What is your will for my life as it pertains to to a career, as it pertains to where I should purchase my house, as it pertains to the car, that I, the type of vehicle that I should purchase. Have we ever put this before God in prayer and fasting and said, Lord, show me your will. What is your will for me? This is what I desire. But you ask God, what is your will? And you come before him so, so humbly, so willingly to give up what is it that you desire to hear what he has to say. So we should always spend the time to seek God's will for our life. Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us, For I know the thought that I, think, that I think toward you. So God have a plan for your life. He has designed your life. He knew you from before you came out of your, the mother's womb. And he has designed a part for you. This part, like I said, might not be all on the mountaintop. This part might be in the valley. This part might be rough. It might be tough at times. But yet still, that is the will of God. And that is what God wants for us as individuals. Whatever it is that he's trying to teach, it, teach us. Whatever it is that he wants to get out of us. That is his vision, his will for our life. And as children of the living God, we are going to find out that we cannot resist the will of God. As children of the living God, we are going to find out that it is best that we submit and surrender to his will in our lives. Amen, somebody. God's will for our life has reason and it has purpose. If we are interested in knowing God's plan, and knowing his perfect will for our life, we must learn to walk 
with God and develop a relationship with him. When you seek him, you will find him. When you seek his will for your life, he will now begin to reveal the things that he has in store from you. And I can testify to that. So we spent some time last week also and we all so look at the life of David. We said Abraham knew God's will and he knew that a nation should come out of him, that he would be the father of many nations. And, but here in this particular situation, Abraham did not sought the Lord. When we look at the life of David, we recognize that David sought the Lord for almost everything. Not that he was without fault. But we look at some scriptures last week. We look at 1 Samuel 23, 1 to 3. And 23, 4 to 5. Um, 23, 10 and 11. 23, 12 and 14. 1 Samuel 30, 8 to 9. 2 Samuel 2, 1 to 2, 2 Samuel 5, 17 to 21, 2 Samuel 5, 22 to 25, and 2 Samuel 21, verse 1. In all these passages, the Bible was clear to make mention that David sought the mind of God. David sought to know the will of God before he moved. Anytime David come upon a situation where his enemies are involved. Before David moved, before he made a move, the Bible says that he always inquired of the Lord. And if the Lord says, go, then he go. If the Lord said, tarry, he tarry. Whatever the Lord said that he should do, that is what he did. But the point that I'm trying to make with all these scriptures is that David spent the time to inquire of the Lord. So David multiple inquiries of the Lord reveal that he was a man of prayer. It reveals that he was a man whose intent was to know and abide in God's will. This was the main reason why he was called a man after God's own heart. God say, and this is taken from Acts 13, 22, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, who will do all my will. I want us to know tonight, bless the name of God, that God is looking for individuals who are driven, individuals who are desirous of doing all God's will. Amen. God is looking for individuals that are willing, that are interested in doing all his will. God does not want individuals. We are only when it suits them. They ask God, God, what is your will in this? So they live their life and make their own decisions. And when they come upon something tough now, that is the time they are saying, God, how is it that you want me to angle this thing? What is it that you want me to do? I want you to know, you see, that, that God will teach us as individuals. And what we go through now, if something like it comes up again, then we should be able to, from what we learn here, be able to make a good decision. So we don't necessarily have to go to God when he teaches us certain things and he teaches us certain principles. But then God wants us as individuals to come to him to say, Lord, what is your will? How would you want me to, 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 to handle this thing? How would you want me to move? What is it that you want me to do? God is seeking for individuals that will do all is will amen i pray tonight that the lord 
give us grace to emulate David's example and to cultivate habits that of always inquiring of the Lord, wanting his answer and desiring to do his will. The more we seek the direction from God in prayer and the more we desire to know his will, the more he is honored and in return will bless us. What is it that we can learn? Amen. The key to discovering God's will for our lives hinge on two things. What is it that we can learn? First thing we said that we should make sure we seek the will of God for our lives. The second point I'm making here is that the key to discovering God's will for our life hinges on two things. One, the desire for you to live your life to please God and not yourself or anyone else. So, the key to knowing and discovering God's will for my life or for your life is for you as an individual to live your life, not to please yourself, not to please another individual, but to please the Lord. Abraham, like I said, and I've been saying it, knew the will of God that nations and kings were going to come out of his lines and that he would be the father of many nations. He was a friend of God, but yet he took counsel from his wife. We know how wives are, not bashing any wife, but they are very influential, right? Sometimes when, when us as men, we, we don't want to move, the wives know how to get us to move. So, so the wives are very influential. And when we look into Genesis chapter 16, 2 and 3, it was Sarah that came up with the idea. Look at it. Genesis chapter 16, 1 and 2. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing, I pray thee. Go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened. Abraham, as the man, should have said, it sounds good. I'm just putting myself, putting my view on the scriptures now. It sounds good, but let me hear what the Lord has to say in the matter. So, husbands, though our wives can be very persuasive at times, hallelujah, as men, as the head of our homes, we need to... To, to understand that some of the times when we make decisions, it can affect the entire family. So Abraham, I believe, should have said, sounds good, I want a seed, but let me go back to God and talk to him about these things. But the Bible says, Abraham Hearken unto the voice of Sarah's wife. And Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Agar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abraham. He wanted a child of his own lines. To be his here. Even when this child was born. This is how much Abraham wanted a child. You know? Even when the child was born. And God said look here. Ishmael will not stand in front of me. Abraham plead with the Lord. 
and said, let Ishmael be the one who you establish your covenant with. Let Ishmael be my heir. And the Lord said, no. Your heir will come from your lines and the womb of Sarah, your wife. Ishmael was the son of the man woman. After the will of man. Isaac was the son of the free woman. After the will of God. I would rather to make sure that I am in the will of God. Abraham, like I said, you can't please anybody. You can't please yourself. You must try the key to unlocking, the key to knowing the will of God for your life is to please the Lord and him only. Abraham pleased himself and he pleased his wife. The key I said to discovering God's will for your life is to live to please God and not yourself or anyone else. You cannot please yourself and at the same time please God. Look at Matthew 6, 16 verses 24. You cannot please yourself and at the same time please God. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him what? Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. This is let him totally deny himself. Let him disown himself, take up his cross, and follow me. When you disown yourself, you are totally sold out to God. If you are totally sold out to God, then you will find the mind of God in everything that you do. When you are completely sold out to God, it's Lord not about me. I must decrease and he must decrease. When you are completely sold out to God, it is Lord not my will but your will be done. His will might Look extremely hard and difficult at the time. But nonetheless, not my will, but thine will be done. So you cannot please yourself and please God at the same time. We must remember that there is a law. When I would do the will of God, something else is present that is saying, don't do the will of God, do your will. So anytime as an individual you find yourself carrying out your will and your desire, understand that you're not pleasing God. Jesus. You cannot please yourself and please the Lord. Because the Bible tells us in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, glory. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Glory and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So look here. We in ourselves tend towards evil. In ourselves we tend towards going against the will of God. The apostle said the flesh lost it against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. So at all times there is a pull on us. To do the things that we want to do. 
But at the same time with this pool, if we follow this pool and give heed to this pool, we'll find ourselves not doing the will of God. So we must know that there is always this law that presents itself. And then we must know that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His way higher than our ways. And if we go into our own way, then we are not pleasing the Lord, but we are pleasing ourselves. And the God that we serve requires that we be totally sold out. He requires that we be totally given over to him. So when we operate, when we do, we can say, Lord, is this your will? And if we are willing, God will direct us. He will show us what it is that he requires. And I believe that as people of God, that we should be willing to do what he requires. Amen. So we say, the second point to this, the second key is our ability to understand the nature of his will and purpose of his will. Jeremiah 29 verses 11. Let us read that one. It's a very familiar passage. We all know it. So we said the key to discovering God's will for our life is to please him and not ourselves and not anyone else. Amen. And now we are saying the second part of this is to understand the nature of his will and purpose of his will. The Bible in the book of Jeremiah 29 verses 11, it tells us, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, our oh, glory and not of evil to give you an expected end. We quote the scripture many times, but are we aware that the key to knowing and doing the will of God lies therein? Joseph, what he went through was rough to him while he was going through it. I believe that he wondered, why me, Lord? Why is it that I have to go through this? But he became the prime minister. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace to prosper you and to give you an expected end. So Joseph, while he went through it, he couldn't even see what God was doing. But if we as individuals can just bear in mind that the thought of God, the plan of God, his will for us includes peace, it includes goodness, it includes an expected end. Then when we approach, when we face any form of situation, anything that rise up against us, bearing this in mind, we can understand the purpose and the will of God for our life. His will is to give us an expected end. His will is to give us peace. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Very powerful. Thoughts to prosper you and to give you an expected end. These two aspects affect every area of our lives. First of all, we need to understand that God is committed to our success. He's committed to our success spiritually, financially, educationally, emotionally, and whatever else you want to add on that. 
God is committed to our success. However, it is his, however, he will object when we focus on these things more than him. He will object when our desire to achieve by any means override what his perfect will is, override what his plan is for your life. God will object. The number one thing that we should do is to seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Seek what it is that he wants us to do. How is it that he wants us to approach the thing and do it according as he would have it. I would like us to know that as children of God, if you are seeking the Lord about a particular thing and you don't hear anything from God, I would like to tell you not to move. Don't move until God give you an answer. When in doubt, stay out. Glory. Don't move until God says, look here, this is how you should. I remember as a young Christian, my aunt prophesied to me. I spent years asking God, seeking God, Lord, is this true? Is this your will for my life? It took years for God to answer me. And when, I answered, when he answered me, I said, yes, Lord, no one knew that what she told me was true. And it is not that God revealed every aspect of his will. Even today, I'm saying, God, look here, just lead my life, direct my life, because I want to make sure that my life fulfill what you want to fulfill in my life, what it is that you want to use me to accomplish. I want to make sure that my life is in your will. What is it that we can learn? The third point, the third point, there are consequences if we go outside of God's will. Amen. There are consequences if we go outside of God's will. As we look again at Genesis chapter 5, Genesis chapter 16, 5 and 6, I'm going to discuss the story a little bit different from how we read it. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong, look here now, this is after, this is after she came up with the idea. She went to her husband, persuaded him to take her handmaid as his wife. He agreed. The Bible said that he hearkened unto the voice of his wife. Hagar was now pregnant. And the Bible says, My wrong be upon thee. This was his wife who made the decision, was now saying to Abraham, The wrong that I did is upon you. Why is it that you didn't say, Allow you to seek the will of God first before you hang unto my voice. Why is it that you don't intervene in what is happening between me and Hagar? Abraham was now caught between his desire of and here. And his wife's arguing.
I given my handmaid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived. Verse 5 still you know. I was despised in her eyes. Despise means to regard with contempt or to scorn. Regard as unworthy of one's notice or, one consider, or one's consideration. Agar, I believe Agar was saying, who are you? You and this man they together for so long. And now I am with him for a short time. And I conceive. Who are you? This was the servant. That Sarah brought to Abraham. Sarah was now complaining. That Abraham you need to do something because it not working out. I thought that would, it would work out but it not working out. This was the wife that took her handmaid and gave to her husband. And now she said in verse 5, My wrong be upon thee. Not upon me, you know. Not upon her. But upon Abraham. He then brought in swearing now, you know. Look at the last clause of, of, of the verse. The Lord judge between me and thee. So when we read the scripture now, we think that it was just something nice that was happening. No. The thing got so bad between them. Remember, Abraham was now 85 And for all his life, he wanted a son. And now, this damsel was with child for him. He was caught between keeping that child and pleasing his wife. So the wife said, the Lord judge between me and thee. Hallelujah. There was an ongoing argument. Because you give me your maid to wife. And now she's with child. The thing I wanted more than anything else. And now you are saying that she despised you. Work it out as best as possible. I believe that Abraham, probably Abraham said, look here, both of you need to work it out. Because it's you. Give me her to wife. But look at verse 6 now. When Abraham could not take it anymore. I tell you, you know, these wives, they are able to persuade. When Abraham could not take it anymore. He said, look at verse 6. Abraham said unto Sarai. Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from before her face. Sarah was so angry because of what was happening, because of what this maid was doing. That when Abraham told her, look here, she's in thy hand. Do with her what you please. Sarah deal with her harshly. The Bible said that Hagar fled from the house. So when we read the story, thinking that it was just a normal happening. Not a normal happening. They had arguments. 
And it reached a point where Abraham said, look here, do with her as you please, man. What transpired in the house was as a result of going outside of God's will. I put it to you, brethren. I put it to you, child of God. If you go outside of the will of God, there will be consequences. Argument was in the house. Swearing was in the house. Because they went outside of the will of God. And, and, and like I said, this is where the burden is. The burden is that for the people of God. Some of the things that we are going through right now as children of the living God is as a direct result of us going outside of God's will. Amen. It is as a direct result of us going outside of God's will. The Holy Ghost told you that you should not do it. Told you that you should stay put. He has a work for you to do in Jamaica. But things look greener on the other side. And so Lord, I know your will. I know your will is for me to stay in Jamaica. You have a, a people for me to reach in Jamaica. But people need to be reached in Canada. So I am going to Canada. Some of the things that you are facing right now in Canada is as a direct result of you going outside of God's will. In order to get to a greener pastor. Amen, somebody. And what some folks are going through in their marriages is as a direct result of disobeying God. And don't worry. I want you to know that irrespective of your marriage can work. Irrespective of it can work. But you have to put in a lot in there. But what you're experiencing in your marriage is as a result of what you think. Remember, I said, no, to find, to, to, to find the perfect will and to do the perfect will of God. You cannot please man. No, you cannot please yourself. But you know that the Holy Ghost was talking to you. And you say, boy, God, we don't set the date already. People don't know already. And now in your heart, Holy Ghost, you are saying, if you didn't know, you let us be obedient to God. I have seen Lives ruined because people went outside of God's will and get married. I want our single sisters to know. I want our single brothers to know that one of the most important things that you can do in this life is to select a partner. I want you to know that if you don't hear from God, don't move. And don't think about come asking God what is your will. And know that he is unsafe. The Bible tells us already. That you should not be joined together with unbelievers. So don't even ask and seek God's will as it pertains to that. Because the Bible tells us his will already. But when you get, 
with somebody that is saved, the brother that is saved, the sister that is saved, and the brother come and say, I like you. Yes, you like me, but what does my father say? Does my father say that you are going to be the husband? Does my father say that you are going to be the wife? One of the most important decisions that we can make as children of God is to take up a partner. See me and come live with me is two different things. Oh, glory to God. And as people of God, I know that, I know that some brothers are pay, praying. I know that some sisters are praying. But make sure that you are in the will of God. Make sure, child of God, that you are in a field burden here. A field burden here. I, I know that I'm talking to somebody. Make sure that you are in the will of God. One of the most important, I say it another time, I am praying for some sisters that God sent some men in the church, and I hear Bishop say it, sent some men in the church that some of our sisters might get husbands. But when God saved them sisters, and though you have been praying for a while, make sure that you hear from God I remember when I wanted to know the will of God as it pertains to a wife, a prayer, a fasted, and I wanted to make real sure. I said, God, here is what you do for me. I want you to cause these things to happen. And at least five things. And five of them happen. I'm going to say, yes, God, I know that this is your perfect will for my life. So imagine now, God said, this is, my will, is your will for, is his will for my life. But then no, I don't like how she look. I don't like how certain things. And then because I like somebody else, I say, look here, this is the one I like. Can you imagine things that could have been happening? But thanks be to God, I make sure I knew that, that, that finding a partner is one of the most important decisions that we can make as individuals. And I spend the time to find the mind of God. Brothers, young men in the Lord, young men who love the Lord, young men who God has a ministry, a work for you to do, I am telling you under the Holy Ghost tonight, make sure that you find the mind of God. Don't look at the shape. Don't look at the looks. Make sure that you find the mind of God. And I'm talking about important decisions that we make. One another important decision that we can make as individuals is to purchase a house. Not because a house is down there and your sister lord is five million and i have five million i can't reach five million mean that that is the house that god wants you to make to live in or to purchase you have got to make sure that lord is it your will so you purchase the house and three years down the line you have to think about moving and selling the house because of violence as children of the living God, we have to be wise. And it is important that we find the mind of God.
The next thing that is extremely important is a career choice. Lord, how is it that my career is going to give you glory? What is it that you young people, what is it that God would have you to do? How can you use it to glorify God? Lord, show me your will. What is it that I should do? I like this thing, but what it is that you want me to? How can it be beneficial to your kingdom? Holy Ghost, another important decision that we can make. is business decision what type of business you want me to do lord who is it that we're going to partner with and i'm telling us that there are some things that are important very important i'm just pointing out some of these things but to god everything is important and if we are Desirous of serving God, of finding His will for our lives. We have to be willing, desirous to say, Lord, anything you say, that is what I am going to do. If we don't do God's will, there are going to be repercussions. The Holy Spirit is gentle and he will not force anyone against his or own, her own will. The Most High wanted to be king over Israel. 1 Samuel 8. And you can read that one. God wanted to be their king. And the people said, Give us a king. Samuel was upset. Samuel went before God and said, God, what is this? Lord said, don't cry, man. Because in saying that they want a king, they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me. And the Lord said, I am going to give them a king. Tell them that if they get a king, the manner of the king. Samuel laid out to them all the manner of the king. The people said, look here. Give us a king. God divine will was that he remained king over these people. As a people, his will for them was that he will be their king. But they rejected him. And look at the repercussion. The first thing is that the kingdom was divided. We're not talking about the smaller things. The first thing was that the kingdom was divided. The next thing was that they were led astray. The people don't, don't even go to Jerusalem again to serve God. Because of the king. Then they were taken away from their homeland. And one kingdom fought against another kingdom. And they are of the same father. Because they went outside of the will of God. God's perfect will for that, for that nation was that, that he remained as their king. And when the prophet said to them, look here, you're doing that, you, you would have gone outside of God's will. The people said, look here, give us the king. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles, I think we have this one, 2 Chronicles 21, 1 to 4. And I want us to understand, child of God, that 
2 Chronicles 21, 1 to 4. I want us to understand, child of God, that when it comes to God's will, when it comes to God's will for our life, Satan will stand up against the will of God. And he will move So David moved to number the children of Israel. The Bible said, and Satan stood up against Israel. Satan will always stand against the will of God. Satan stand up and he provoked David to number Israel. Joab and the rulers of the people go number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan and bring the number of them to me that I may know it and Joab answered the Lord Joab answered the Lord make his people an hundred times so many more as they be remember you know, the very same scripture that we read the Lord took Abraham and he said, look at the stars. Are you able to number it? And he said, so is it that I'm going to know, give, you, give you seeds that you can't number. So in David now moving to number Israel, going outside of God's will, First Chronicles 21 verses 1. So Job answered, The Lord make his people an hundred times so many more as they be. But my Lord the King, are they not all my Lord's servant? Why then do it, my Lord, require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? Nevertheless, the king word prevail against Joab. Wherefore Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came back to Jerusalem with a number. And the anger of the Lord was kindled. And he smote the men of Israel. There was an angel there present before them. And God said, look here, hold your hand. Don't kill anymore. And the Lord sent the prophet to David and said, David, these three things, what is it that you would have me to do? David said, look here, I'm not making any decision. You know, I prefer to fall on the mercies of God because he's a merciful God. And God sent pestilence in the land. But there will be consequences when we go outside of God's will. God's will for our life include the kind of man, the kind of woman, the career, the ministry. Where you live and so on. God's will for your life include all of that. My question to you tonight. What is it that you are going to do? Know that you know that God has been speaking up to you. Know that tonight from the word of God, God has, been, has confirmed what is in your spirit. What is it that you are going to do? Are you going to watch face and please men and, and try to please yourself? Or is it that you are now willing to submit to the will of God for your life? The will of God takes patience. What is it that we can learn? We can learn that the will of God takes patience. Let me point out to us that the perfect will of God is going to take patience if we are willing to abide and do the will of God. Patience is a virtue. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. It says, be careful 
for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Though we mention that God will answer us when we ask to know his will, we are going to find out that there are times when the answer will not come right away. And there are times when the answer will come right away, but you will have to wait for the fruition to come. Abraham knew the will of God, that nations and kings were going to come out of his lines, and that he would be the father of many nations. However, Abraham had to wait 25 years. And that's a long time. I don't know what you have been praying about. It might be a long time coming. Years have passed. But I encourage you tonight to wait on the Lord. The will of God might not it, it come as you expect it. It might not manifest before you as you expect it. But you have to wait on the Lord. If you are not sure if this is his will, pause a little. Wait a little on him to direct you. God will not have you waiting indefinitely. For he is not slack concerning his will for your life. Your time might not be God's time. For a day with the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years but as a day. But they that wait upon the Lord, the Bible says, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If you are about If you are going about it according to God's will, it will require patience. It will require you spending the time finding the mind of God. It will require God reiterating to you what he had said. It will be about you seeking the Lord for another aspect of his will. At the end of the day, it will all make sense. But you have got to remember that it is going to take patience. It is going to, going to take some time and you have going to just be patient and wait on the Lord. The Bible in Proverbs 3. Proverbs Chapter 3, 5 and 6. It gives a blueprint for how to be led by God. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways. Hallelujah. Acknowledge him. And he shall direct your part. In all thy ways. Acknowledge him. In the simplest of things. Acknowledge him. In the big decisions of life. Acknowledge him. In the things that look so trivial. Acknowledge him. And the Bible says, he will direct your path. If you want to know the will of God as it pertains to your life, as it pertains to you going left or you going right, acknowledge him. 
and he shall direct your path. It is important, brothers and sisters, that as we go through this life, that we spend the time to walk circumspectly. Spend the time to find the mind, to find the will of God as it pertains to our life. Mark you, sometimes our desires get the better of us and we plunge into these desires and, and go ahead doing everything with the, in our will you know, to achieve or to accomplish what we want to achieve. But I am reminding us tonight, irrespective of what is it that we want to achieve, God has designed a plan for your life. He has designed a roadmap. And this is how he would want you to traverse that roadmap. He will not force you. But he would want you to traverse that road that he has designed for you a particular way. And if you go outside, remember, there will be repercussions. God bless us tonight as we ponder on these words, finding and abiding in the will of God. It is very important. It's not as simple as some folks take it to be. Finding the will of God for your ministry, for, your, for the person you are married, for everything is extremely important. God bless you tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just bow your head. Lord, we come to you another time and we thank you, God, for what was said. We thank you for your presence that we felt. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will touch each and every person that will listen this tonight, but even in the future. We pray, God, that it will always be there to minister and that persons will be directed that persons will be convicted, understanding that they should know your will for their life and that they should know that your will is important. We ask, mighty God, that you cover your people and that you will take full control. Help us to surrender all to you, Lord Jesus. Of ourselves, we are prone to make bad decisions. Of ourselves, Lord Jesus, when we express our own will, we go against your will. Help us, God, to submit to you tonight. Submit our will to yours. It's not our will, but your will be done. We thank you tonight for hearing. We thank you tonight for answering. We bless your holy name and we give you thanks right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. In Jesus' name.